Hey guys, Miss Davis here. You're watching Unit 7, Skill 1, um, Finding Distance and Slope of Two Points. So pause the video to write down your essential question. How do I find the distance and slope between two points given their coordinates? So coordinates are just the x, y values of their points on the graph. So the first um, thing we're going to do is go through, just talk about the formulas you're going to use. Distance, you're always going to use the Pythagorean Theorem. Um, so you're going to be making a right triangle on the graph and finding the rise and the run for slope. So your slope is always rise over run, changing y over changing x. It's really your vertical distance divided by your horizontal distance. Okay, um, and then distance, we're going to use the numbers from the um, right triangle that we create and use the a and the b. So it'll be a right triangle that we create, and you're going to find the hypotenuse for each one of these problems. Okay, Over here on the left side is the just some steps if you want to read over them. Um, you're going to find the change in x by calculating the difference between the x-coordinates, the y, same thing there, and then plug those numbers into the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so for example, when I've already plotted my points, and the directions say to calculate or find the distance and slope between points A and B. So I'm going to, and for all these problems, we're going to set up a little chart. Um, so we're going to make a little t-chart like this. And we're going to do one for slope. We're going to usually do slope first, um, which is, again, your change in y over change in x. And then your last column or second column will be distance. And the distance, you will always use a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Oh. Um, and then the side that we're finding the slope and distance between is side a, b. So a, b, we're going to put over here. And we're going to go ahead and calculate this and um, using our picture. So if I look at my picture, I want to start from the left and go from left to right. How do I get from a to b? Okay. So to get from a to b, we want to go our vertical distance first. Um, and actually, let me back up a little bit. We first have to decide if the slope is positive or negative. From left to right, A going to B is going downhill. So if it's a downhill slope, we're going to circle that it's a negative slope. And then we need to figure out what's the change in Y, what's the change in X. So our top number is going to be the vertical distance up or down. So from A to B, I'm going down one over 1, 2, 3, 4. So down 1 over 4 means our slope is going to turn into negative 1 over 4. And I'm just going to rewrite it with the correct sign in front. So our slope is negative 1 fourth. Then our distance, we're always going to, so what we've actually done here is we've created a little right triangle that has this side as a 1 and this side as a 4, we never want to use distance as negative. Okay, They always have to be positive because you can't ever measure anything and call it a negative distance. So we're going to plug in this as our a and our b, 1 and 4, and, and find our hypotenuse. So it'll be 1 squared plus 4 squared equals c squared. All right, we get 1 squared is 1 plus 4 times 4 is 16 equals c squared. And then we would do um, 1 plus 16 is 17 equals c squared, square root both sides, and we'd be left with the square root of 17 is equal to c. And that's okay to leave it like that. Um, the square root of 17 does have a value. It's close to 4 because the square root of 16 is 4. Um, but for right now, you just want to leave it as its exact value, which is square root of 17. Okay? So that slope is negative 1 fourth, and our distance is square root of 17. All right, I'm going to scroll on down here and go to example number two. So I'm going to pause and plot these points. So go ahead and plot P, Q, and R for triangle P, Q, R. Okay, so example two, I plotted my three points. Your triangle should look like this. Um, and it says find the distance and slope between P and Q. So between P and Q is going to be from here all the way down to here. So when we set up our chart here, we're going to make another same chart like you did before. So we've got slope, and we've got well, distance. Okay, so our slope again is change in y over change in x, 
and we're going to be doing it just between P and Q. Okay, so our positive and negative slope. Let me do that in blue. So is it positive or is it negative? Well, this line right here is actually vertical. So if it's vertical, it's really not positive or negative. Um, we're going to, you're going to see what happens. Um, and I want you to think, what's the slope of a vertical line? Well, to get from Q all the way up to P is a change in what for our top number. So our change in Y is going from negative 6 all the way up to positive 7. So that's a change in 13. So it's increasing or decreasing by 13, however you think about it, divided by my change in my x values is 0. I'm not going left or right at all because I'm staying right on that negative 5 x value line. So when that happens, when you have a vertical line, it actually turns into an undefined slope. Okay, because you can't ever divide by 0. That's a no-no. Um, so this right here makes it undefined. Okay. Um, so our distance then, if it lies on a flat line like that, is actually just going to be 13 blocks because you're just going 13 straight blocks. You're not going on a diagonal at all. But if you wanted to prove it, we could use the 13 and the 0, um, and you would do... Actually, we wouldn't have a right triangle in this case, so we couldn't do the Pythagorean theorem. My bad. But, um, so again, if it's on a straight line, it's going to be... Um, just count the number of blocks between the two points. If it was this way horizontal line, like between two points here and here, it would be a change of, let's say it was 13 going this way, um, and a rise of 0. So if it was change in y over change in x, our vertical change would be 0 over our horizontal change would be 13, which would be 0 in that case. So if it was a horizontal line, it would actually be a slope of 0, but since it was a vertical line, the slope is always undefined. Okay, so flip on over to the next page. All right, for our last example here, we are given a triangle again with our coordinates, and it says find the distance and slope of all three sides, R, S, S, T, and R, T, and state the type of triangle that it is. So if it's an isosceles triangle, we're going to end up having two congruent sides. If it's scaling, no sides are going to be congruent. And if it's equilateral, it's going to be all three congruent sides. So we're going to look at the distance column. And this will be told, or it'll be evident through our distance column. Okay? So let's go ahead and set up that chart again. Okay? So I've got slope, distance. All right, and our three sides are R, S, S, T, and R, T. Okay? All right. So let's start with R, S. When we go ahead and look at our picture, we want to first, again, um, our first step is always to decide if they're positive or negative slopes. Positive or negative slopes. Okay? So we want to look from left to right to determine if it's a positive or negative slope. Okay, so from left to right, let's look at our S first. So our S from left to right is an increasing line, so it's a positive slope, okay? Um, let's do our second one. Um, ST, if I look from left to right, is going downhill, so that's a negative slope. And then our last one, RT, from left to right, is also decreasing, so that's another negative slope. So there's only one that's positive is the green line that's going uphill. Okay, so let's go ahead and find our slopes then between R and S. Starting with the leftmost point, I'm going to make a right triangle. So I'm going to start down at R and go up to the line that S is on and make that right triangle right there. So that right triangle has a rise of 2 and a run of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so it's a positive 2 over 8. And if we reduce that down, we're going to divide by 2, divide by 2, we're going to get 1 fourth. So it'll be a positive 1 fourth. 
When I go to do the distance, though, I just want to make sure that we know that um, A and B, you always have to use the original ones. So A and B have to be the numbers that you found on your chart. They cannot be the after reduced number, so they're not the one-fourth. So in this case, we'll use 2 squared plus 8 squared equals C squared. And then we can plug in or and find 2 squared is 4 plus 8 squared is 64. So when we add those together, we get 68. And just to kind of shortcut, get, like to save ourselves some work, we can square root both sides right away and get the square root of 64 is C. So that's the length of RS. Now I'm going to go to find the length of ST. So with my leftmost point starting at T, go all the way over to S and down. So from T, which is at negative 5, all the way over to S, which is at 10, that's a change in 15 going that way, and then going down is 1, 2, 3. So we're going down 3 units. Okay, so our slope is again, we want to make sure that it's a negative, um, and our vertical distance is the 3, so it's 3 over 15, which we can reduce down by 3, by 3, should be 1 over 5. So a negative one-fifth, because we circled it negative from the beginning, okay? So when I go over here, though, remember I have to use my pre-reduced number. So it'll be 3 squared plus 15 squared equals C squared, okay? So when I add those together, I get 234, and then I'm going to square root both sides. And square root both sides there, so our answer would be the square root of 234 for the length of ST. Now our last one, RT or TR, um, you want to start with your leftmost point. I should have went the vertical distance first with TS, um, but for this one I'll just make sure to do it this time. So start with the leftmost point and go down and over to make your right triangle. So our vertical change was... From T to R was 5, so down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And our horizontal change was 7. So we have a negative, because it dropped or it went downhill, 5 over 7. And that one doesn't reduce, so we can just rewrite it as negative 5 over 7. And then come over here. Remember to never use negatives in this column. So we'll add together 25 and 49, give us 74. So the square root of 74 is equal to C. So there's all of our lengths and all of our distances and our slopes. So our slopes here are negative or positive one fourth. Our distance is square root of 64. Our slope of ST is negative one fifth. Our distance was square root of 234. And last but not least, we've got negative 5 over 7 and then square root of 74. Now those actually have um, values. Again, you just have to type them into the calculator and get the actual numerical value. If they asked, like if it said round to the nearest tenth or nearest hundredth, you have to type those in. So now we have to go back up here and decide, is it isosceles, scalene, or equilateral? Well, we have to look at the three distances, and as you can see, none of these three sides are congruent. So no sides congruent in length. So the type of triangle that it must be is scalene. Okay? All right. So go ahead and um, proceed down to the bottom to write your summary, and then when you're done with that, you can go on to your practice.